What's going on guys? Nick Lessador here. Brandon Delicchia. Exit 12. Homebrew. In the house. Oh yeah. In the house. You only get one. Welcome. We're in the brewery today. Oh yeah. Or as my son would say, the brewery. Yeah. What are we doing today, bud? So we got some competitions going down. Mm. Two competitions. Three competitions, yeah, all within the same time frame. What we're doing today is a double brew day. One of the beers we're entering in the competition is Donovan, our double IPA, trying for double anyway. We'll see what happens. Yep. Uh, yeah. And then that's a beer that we put in a competition in Chicago, the Drunk Monk, finished fourth in the category of New England IPA. Yeah. Not happy about that, trying to meddle. Yeah, no, it wasn't great. It was, uh, I'd rather finish last, if you're not first, you're last, Ricky Bobby. That's right, I agree. The second beer we're doing is a brown ale, though. Yes. And it's going to be a traditional brown ale. This is not the brown ale that we've done before called Lateral Cohesion, which I'll put the label art right there, right over Brandon's fat belly. Rude. And it's different. We're not adding flaked adjuncts. This is going to be very traditional. It's an English style brown ale. So we're going to be going in starting with five pounds of Maris Otter, mm -hmm. the legitimate Maris Otter, not that knockoff stuff. From who, who does the legitimate one? Is it Thomas Fawcett? Thomas Fawcett. Or is that a different mall? I think deep it might be a cut, different mall. Deep cut. Thomas Fawcett's pale chocolate hitting seven ounces of that, doing a pound of carapils, only three ounces of brown malt, uh, and two pounds of pale two-row. Oh, yeah. UK two-row. We are trying to go as uh, non-American as possible. Uh, <laughs> well, it's an English brown ale. Awesome. Yeah, that's fine. We are using two packs of Cephal 04. It's been a long, long time since we've used dry yeast. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going for about 5%, 5.2%. We probably don't need two yeast packs, but we're uber sensitive to uh, not having enough of the yeasties to feasties on the sugars, as Adele would say. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, there was another one, though. it wasn't sugars, but... It, it was the yeasties do the feasties to produce the feces. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, yeah, what, that's what it was. That's what uh, it is. Going in with a World Flock tablet as well to help clear up a little bit. Uh, and as I mentioned, the two, the two Cephalo 4 packs, because we used a 2 liter yeast starter uh, later in the week on Dunavin, and so we don't have another yeast starter set up, yeah. so we had to go with a dry yeast, which was kind of a big brain move, let's yeah, be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's a great move, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a definite, uh, it's a vet move. You're now a vet in the game. And that's right, like, yeah, that's awesome. right, I agree with that. And to that point, I think another vet move is to look up an adequate water profile, which Brandon did. Yeah, I did uh, a little research, uh, tried to find something as a more traditional English brown ale. Um, I got a bunch of forums, a bunch of stuff as, as, as most people would, sort of looking through those, and I found something that was more traditional to the waters of the region that it is produced. And I also forgot to mention that we do have eight ounces of Crystal 10 in this as well. Uh, I'm, we're still getting used to the Brewfather software reading the recipes. Yeah, that's definitely, you know, if you check out our one of our previous videos, Nick will put a little thing, a box up here with that. Uh, <laughs> it, I checked out the Brew, uh, Brewfather software, Nick checked out on his own free time, you know, not with you guys involved because he doesn't care. Uh, we just got so many buzzers going on. Buzzers galore, we're getting ready for this brew day. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's go, baby. Okay. Let's mash in on the competition brown ale.
That was a relatively, actually a very easy mashing. We're at 1.7 quarts per pound, so the mash is gonna be very thin. We kinda like where our efficiencies are at utilizing that quart to pound ratio. Looking super thin now. The goal is to just check, make sure I don't have any dough balls, but the way I mashed in, putting the grain in at a kind of consistently slower pace and just dumping it all in should ensure zero dough balls. All right. Just missed that alarm. And we are going to now turn on the pump for a minute or two just to make sure that everything is adequately mixed up and then we're going to take a sample for pH. Our pH target is 5.33. Okay we have our one hour timer going nice and strong on the brown ale and as you can see if I can open this the flow is just beautiful. So I got the sample in the fridge for five minutes and then we'll take a pH reading. But so far so good. Okay, 5.27. That is on the lower end of the range. We were shooting for 5.33, but uh, that's close enough. I think we'll take that. Okay, we just started mashing out on the brown ale. Brandon, he's here doing a uh, mash pH on our second beer for the competition, which is Donovan. Uh, 168. Moving right along on the brown ale. Boy, does that look pretty. There's something specific about English styles uh, that the smell is just fantastic. I probably over romanticize it because uh, it's not an American style, but it's amazing nonetheless. And the pump is absolutely just ripping. All right, 10 minute mash out is complete on the competition brown ale. We're gonna pull up the mall pipe. We're gonna sparge. I love hearing this noise of the filtering. Oh, Mickey muscles. Mickey muscles. <laughs> Housed it. We're gonna sparge with probably, I think a gallon and a half. We have to look at the recipe. The filtering on this is amazing. It's been a long time since we've had the pump on the robo brew up all the way, but we did. And uh, I'm really excited to see how this turns out uh, from a competition perspective. It's fall here in New England, coming up on fall. We wanted to do, we didn't want to do an experiment beer for a competition beer. It's a little bit of an experiment. We've done brown ales before, uh, as I mentioned in the intro, but uh, overall, uh, this is going to be a good, even if we don't score well, whatever, this is going to be a good beer for us to have on tap. Right, we're currently sitting at first runnings, 0.52. Big thanks to the people at Brewing America for this mash hydrometer. We don't have to cool down to temperatures. It's already calibrated at 155 degrees. So this is first runnings is 152, 1052. We are shooting for a pre-boil of 043. So looking good so far. Uh, we just sparged with under a gallon of water. And we're gonna check our pre-boil once this thing starts boiling. So we use the gash slug method. Uh, the Gavin method, which is you take your pre-boil when it starts boiling so you know that the liquid is adequately mixed. Kaboom. All right, 60 minute edition, half ounce of Cluster Fugget. It is a hop blend from the fine folks at Yakima Chief Hops. 
and uh, we're well on our way. Pre-boil volume, pre-boil gravity, rather, 1.043. Estimated pre-boil gravity, 1.043. Very, very cool. Can't say that we don't have the robo-brew dialed in. <laughs> okay, 0.55 ounces of fuggle going in with 15 minutes left in the boil. Boom! All right, we got 10 minutes left in the boil. We're adding a full world clock tablet and a tablespoon of yeast nutrient. The reason why we had the world clock tablet is to clear, help clear the beer up, drop some of that protein out of suspension. We add the full world clock. We don't go with a half. We don't, we don't crush it up. We just throw it in whole. There's 10 minutes left in the boil. The boil should break it up. And then we add a full tablespoon, as I said, of the yeast nutrient. You could add half a tablespoon, teaspoon, whatever you want. Uh, we seem to have good luck adding a tablespoon of yeast nutrient, so that's what we do. That's gonna help give the yeasties a little bit healthier of a feasties, so that they can produce the feces, which is what we drink. All right, the sound of that buzzer means we have five minutes left in the boil, which means we're going in with another little bit over a half an ounce of East Kent Goldings. And now in five minutes, we're gonna shut off the boil, cool down and transfer this to the fermenter. Pitch our two packs of SO4, call it a day. All right, we are chilling down the brown ale. You guys have seen our chilling process before. It's nothing new. Utilizing the jaded wort chiller. Looking good on the brown ale. Very excited to take a gravity reading and to pitch the yeast. All right, it is 11.48 a.m. This is the earliest we've gotten done ever with uh, two beers. Probably the earliest we've gotten done with one beer. Like fully cleaned up, everything's good to go. We have, I'd say four gallons of the brown ale chilling in a keg. We are gonna keg ferment this because we don't have enough space in our fermentation fridge for two beers. This is Donovan in the Firmzilla and in the keg, the brown ale. We're gonna pitch two yeast packs of Cephal. Cephal, Cephal, however you say it, 04. Should ferment out nice and clean. As you saw in the sample in the hydrometer, it is super clear. We're very excited about this beer. Let's pitch some yeast. <laughs> Package one. Package two. And we're gonna put the top on this keg. We're gonna let it naturally come up and we're gonna pressure ferment it at 10 PSI. 11.48, just before noon. That means a midday fiesta. Time to have some beers out on the deck. It's perfect outside right now. Got a cheese plate. Your boy had to bring in, in emergency, get some meats for my guy, Brandon. So we're good to go. This brew day's a wrap. We'll follow back up.
is Labor Day Monday, three days into fermentation. Still sitting nice at 10, well, 11. A nice, healthy, fluffy Krausen sitting on top of Donovan. And this is the brown ale. It has been a challenge dialing in this specific spunding valve very very touchy so as it sits at 12 psi 13 uh, I'm not gonna mess with it so I notice if I take that valve and I open it too much it will completely bleed out all the air we're well on our way into fermentation all right it is Tuesday morning Five days post brew, post yeast pitch. As you can see on the brown ale, PSI went down a little bit. I did try to mess with the, I did try to mess with the lever <clears throat> because we were up a little bit over 15 PSI uh, yesterday, and it immediately fell down to zero. This lever is really touchy, as I mentioned. I don't know what it is exactly. Krausen here in the double IPA is down a little bit, but still relatively fluffy. Some nice little activity going on. My expectation is by Wednesday or Thursday that'll be completely dissipated. And we'll be able to uh, dry hop. Okay, we're five days into fermentation. It is Wednesday evening. PSI sitting at about 11. And same here for the brown ale. As I mentioned, the brown ale, the spunning valve is really touchy, so I'm just gonna leave it at, at 11. Hope it doesn't go up too much more, and if it does, I'm gonna have to let some off. It looks like we just have a small layer now, Krausen. This thing looks like it's uh, ramping down here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it dry hopped, cold crash, and cake before I go on vacation. So we'll see. Okay, it is Sunday morning. About six hours or so before I leave for my trip to Hawaii, if you've been listening to the podcast. I'm recording this on my phone because my son... Is upstairs in the living room and if he sees me go upstairs to grab the camera and then back downstairs he'll yell brewery 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 and he'll want to come down and that's just not feasible right now so we are transferring the first of our competition beers donovan looking pretty good i'd say Let it sit at 15 PSI, probably, for the week. And hopefully I'll come home and uh, throw it probably, depending on what the PSI range is, uh, how carbonated it is, I'll probably throw it again on 20 PSI for a few days and then we should be good to go or something. We'll see.
All right, it is Wednesday, September 23rd. We're dropping off the beers for the first of our competitions. We are entering the uh, barrel-aged Imperial Coffee Milk Stout, thrice in a lifetime, uh, an older version of Donovan, a newer version of Donovan, and then the fourth beer is the Brown Ale. So four beers is the most we've ever entered in a competition. We're at the location now, which just so happens to be Beer and Wine Hobby, an official sponsor, the official sponsor, homebrew store sponsor of the Brewtubers Online Brewers Club, which is really cool. My first time being here, it's about an hour away from my house. So we're going to go in, say hi to the folks, drop off some beers. I have some goodies for Gennaro, the owner, and Erica, the associate that I work with that works there as well. And we're going to uh, maybe take a little tour. We'll see. Uh, I have to get back to work at some point. So let's do it.
All right, here we are. It is tasting day. Oh yeah. It is Wednesday, September 22nd. I don't think everybody needs to know dates and times. I don't need you to know all my business. He lives his life a quarter mile at a time, Vin Diesel. I just don't like people knowing my business. My business. That's right. We just canned this up for yeah. the Merrimack Valley Homebrew Competition. Oh yeah. It is an English brown ale, uh, traditional, very traditional, and honestly, pouring it out of the tap, because of the chill haze, it was not looking super clear, but now uh, it actually has a decent clarity on it. It's uh, ruby, a little bit darker, uh, a little bit darker, it, it's showing on the on camera, but it, it is relatively, it's kind of like a dark orange ruby-ish almost. Yeah, I would say that it's, yeah, I. I I always say amber, so I'm just gonna Amber's go good. with amber. I think amber's perfect. The light catches it right. It's just, it's a light brown ale, which I like. I do not like the darker brown ales. But you love lateral cohesion, which is our brown ale yeah. that's borders on like a stout. I super also dark. fought for it to be darker, but lighter. You mean lighter? And I lost. So that beer is fantastic. This is way different than what we've done from a traditional, from a traditional standpoint. Sure. This is letter of the law brown ale. Uh, we even, Brandon, even uh, the master of the water chemistry, even matched, tried to match the water chemistry that they get in the UK and yes. London, a place I'm dying to go to. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm from Europe in another life, I yeah. swear. Mm -hmm. Norway's my favorite place to be. Yeah. What are you going to do? One thing before we start, Nick, as you can see more of us, why could you see more of us? A little nervous about this. A little nervous. You, you can probably see maybe the sweat glands. Oh, yeah. Maybe the giblets. Oh, I don't know. You know, we, we got a new camera, and I don't know if this is a good decision because <laughs> all, like, maybe we're not HD people. You know, like, <laughs> That's, before yeah. HD, people could get away with more, and maybe movie stars that looked ugly could, could get away with it with the fuzz. We're in HD. We got a brand new camera, and, and you can see all of us, and it's not, it's probably not going to be pretty. No, I agree. Uh, and, and we heard, we, we listened to the people. They said, your camera sucks. And we said, all right, it's time for us to take a look at an upgrade. Yeah, so here we 100%. are. Uh, brown ale. Let's take a little uh, aroma nose a Okay. Toasty. Sure, I'm getting the toasty. Uh, rye almost? We didn't add rye, but I no. get like a rye kind of characteristic. Yeah, I'm definitely getting uh, a little bit of vanilla, like a vanilla bean. Interesting. Um, yeah, light chocolate. Um, really that nice roasty. caramel. That that caramel, caramel malt comes caramel's better. Nicely. Caramel is a better, a hundred percent better than um, than chocolate. I meant caramel. I meant caramel. Brain. Yeah. Let's the caramel malt comes through real nice. I'm excited about it. I'm dying to try this. I keep trying to cut them off so we can get into it. Yeah, 4.2%, uh, which is on the lower end of the English Brown Ale from a BJCP standpoint. We finished at 0 0.019 mm -hmm. for the final gravity. So a little disappointed. We wanted to get a little bit lower. So we're going to have to take a look at those things uh, from yeah. from an operational standpoint. But 4.2 is very drinkable. Sure. And I like that. Yeah, I mean, we got we got some bigger beers right now so this is actually pretty good to be a nice sipper and if merrimack valley if you judge us for this unfavorably coming after you that's that sounded very threatening yeah we're not gonna do any of that <laughs> <laughs> cheers, cheers. Well, hi wow it is it's um hmm Trying to get what the flavor is that I'm really picking up. I'm definitely get the roasty, toasty notes in the front end. Yeah, I'm definitely getting cinnamon. Uh, I'm getting a big hit of cinnamon. It's 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 not bitter at all, which is nice. I catch bitterness on the middle of the back end for sure. Hmm. I'm not getting much of it, um, but I am getting a nice rounded flavor. I think the water plays nice. Uh, this is the first time we use this profile, as Nick said, so it is a little different for us. Um, Slightly aqueous, and I think that speaks to the low ABV. I think if the yeasties were able to do the feasties uh, on more of the sugar, uh, then maybe maybe we would get more of a rounded Del flavor. Del is going to sue you because that's her saying. Look at that lacing. Nice lacing, yeah, I will admit that. Focus in. 
on that. Look at that lacing. Brandon's having fun with the camera for sure. Uh, so expect this the next few episodes. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, overall though, I think it's a good beer. I'm intrigued to see how it scores. In truth, uh, I don't have a ton of English brown ales. I do like the English style of beers though. I like their porters. I love the water profile. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really snappy and perky. Uh, so I think it's gonna be interesting to see how this scores. I think sure. from a uh, characteristic, I think from a standpoint of me enjoying it, it's a good beer, it's fine. Um, I Unless it wins awards, I'll probably never brew it again. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. I like it. Let's see how it sits. This is fresh off the tap. I'd like to see how it matures. It, literally, this is the first pour off the tap. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like it. I am enjoying it, but I would agree. I like, I would like for those flavors to sort of, um, the complexity. I want the cinnamon and the toastiness and the bitterness all to sort of play together. And see, like I get that. Levels. I like that. My only, cons my only, it's missing the caramel. It's missing that, that kind of uh, thin. classic it's aqueous right it's thin it's missing that like I classic thin, brown ale characteristic aqueous. oh well listen what are you gonna do what are you gonna not do? editing that one out <laughs> <laughs> so beer is okay beer is good like subscribe hit the notification button for this absolutely please do the Exit 12 Craft Beer and Homebrew Lifestyle Podcast. My guy's a f***ing... Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely editing that out. Oh, you can just beep. Uh, my guy's a superstar. Killing the podcast. Editing game. And uh, we're really excited. Thanks so much for the support. And uh, as you can see, uh, this thing's getting clearer and clearer, it would seem. I'm going to do a little pointing situation. Kabbalah, bang. How do you do? <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, you thought I was having fun with this. This is just the beginning. We're going to be doing all sorts of things. Wait till we learn how to zoom. Wait till we learn how to like play with the buttons. We're going to be making stuff that will blow your tits off. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Uh, grain the glass, and we'll keep you guys apprised of, of the results. Ochaim. <laughs>